welcome to Masail Nisa. I am your host Tomara Tasneem and with me is Ustada Saliha. Assalamu alaikum Ustada. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ustada, before we begin, mm -hmm. I would like to ask if you can start our show with a dua inshallah. Okay, inshallah, yeah. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillahi al-kareem. Rabbi shrahli, sadri, wa yassirli amri, wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani, yafqahu qawli. And over to you. Jazakallah khair. So, Ustada, last week we began discussing the topic of marriage and mm. you um, really uh, graciously, alhamdulillah, started the topic of even before we go into marriage, there's some things that we should be thinking about. And mm. it's really interesting because sometimes when people think of marriage, we just think of, okay, I just need to do, you know, do the deed, basically, get married, yeah. and get the ring. Um, but really, there are things that help build us and mm. build us in order to have a long lasting marriage inshallah um, so on that topic you mentioned a few things you mentioned self-awareness being motivated um, being purpose driven mm -hmm. and having intense focus um, so I actually wanted to go back and touch on some of these topics that you mentioned just to refresh the you know our viewers on, uh, on the topic inshallah of course Jazakallah khairan yes so what we talked about is of course um, you know, coming to think about marriage before we even come to marriage, as you said, there's self-development, isn't there? There's so many points about ourselves that we probably don't know or need to discover. Um, in fact, it's probably one of the most daunting tasks in our life when we go looking for a partner or, you know, our parents begin looking for us and, you know, present us with these choices and how do you choose? Mm -hmm. um, and so, of course, it's vital that you know who you are and what you want from life and what your purpose is in life. And, you know, how are you driven? How are you motivated? You know, how, how goal driven are you so that you can find that person, you know, who will match you in all of those, um, you know, qualities or values that you hold. Um, and as you said, self-awareness, number one, we talked about self-awareness, you know, knowing uh, your faith, your belief, you know, what is your deen, how far are you willing to go for your deen, you know, how serious are you about your deen, because, you know, we look around today, um, and alhamdulillah, we're Muslim, but we do find that we're all on different levels, you know, in terms of our faith, and that can happen, you know, Iman can fluctuate um, in, in terms of, you know, how we're feeling one day to another, um, and the challenges we face on a day-to-day -day basis. And actually, that's why you want a strong partnership and you want a firm matching partnership. You know, when we talk about kufu or um, compatibility in marriage, this is the reason we look for that, so that we can have something long-lasting. La long and you mentioned the um, second point, um, being purpose-driven in life. So for a uh, woman, for a Muslim, it's so important to know what's we know already what our purpose is in life. Um, you know, we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to live and die by Islam. Um, you know, we want to attain Jannah, inshallah. But during our lifetime, I think the question we need to ask ourselves is, do we just want to be a wife and a mother? And, you know, that's absolutely fine because we have many examples, um, you know, at the time of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and, you know, many women were you know, took the role of primary, primary role of being a mother and a wife. Um, and we, of course, see that they played a supportive role in many other ways. But also in that same era, we find examples of many women who were, you know, take Khadija radiallahu anha, for example. She was a, an entre entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but she was also a mother. And, you know, she was a very mature woman, um, you know, who ran her business, who was the wife of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for approximately 25 years. Um, then we have the example of Aisha radiallahu anha, for example. She was very young. Um, again, she did not have a family. She did not have children. Uh, with our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, you know, she went on to become a scholar and a teacher. Um, so we have varying examples, you know, amongst the uh, Sahabiyat. And I think we can take from these examples and learn from them. Yes, it was in a different era, but we can apply the examples uh, in our lives. And of course, we have the best examples, you know, in the uh, examples of uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's the purpose-driven life. Mm -hmm. So. And if we have other um, 
you know, goals, we have other aspirations, then it's important to think that you need to find somebody who's looking um, equally, you know, looking to support somebody like that. Yeah. So if, if I just give you a very basic e example, if a young man is looking for a housewife mm. um, and a mother and, you know, and it's, he, he just wants to lead a simple life and he's not very goal driven mm -hmm. um, and he's happy with his you know simple job then of course you want to find somebody that will match that kind of lifestyle if on the other hand you have a sister who's very goal driven mm -hmm. you know and she's um, achieved a lot in her professional life but of, of course at the same time she wants to be a mother mm -hmm. she wants to be a wife then we need to you know look um, to find her uh, partner or spouse you know, within those boundaries, somebody who will support her in her lifestyle. So we find somebody similar. So I think it's really important to think about these points. And um, thirdly, we talked about self-motivation. So motivation is really important because it's different when it's just yourself. We can procrastinate, we can put things off because we're not responsible for anybody else. Mm. When you become a wife, you become responsible you know, to your husband. Um, when you become a mother to your children, and of course there are many other relationships that you form mm. and we have responsibility towards them. So again, it's really um, important to remain motivated. And I, and I think for us as Muslims, we take that motivation from uh, Islam and you know as I said from the many examples and from the reward uh, that is um, you know related to um, keeping or maintaining these relations and I think lastly um, number four you mentioned was um, so keeping intense focus and this will give us effectiveness in um, you know whatever it is we want to achieve so focus is important because it's like this um, can you ever imagine yourself getting on a bus or a train, uh, you know, or any kind of vehicle and thinking, um, you know, I'm going somewhere, but I haven't decided yet. Mm. We can't. We would think it's um, ridiculous if somebody did that. So we, we finalize our destination before we uh, get, a, get on a vehicle. We think to ourselves, I want to go from here, from A to B. And we have a purpose. We have a reason why we want to get there. And, and so what happens is we, it's, it's focus, isn't it? We get from A to B and within that specified time and get our task done. So similarly in life, you have to have intense focus, um, you know, to have that effectiveness. Um, and that takes us on to, um, so I hope that's made sense yeah, to you. Those are the four points we've covered yeah, so far. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And I know you mm. wanted to, Jazakallah uh, and you know, um, even just the yeah. few points that you mentioned, it's mm. made me think of, you know, like I, ha I have friends who um, are yet to get married and some sisters who I know who have got married. Yeah. Um, and it really makes so much sense to think about these things before marriage because you don't want to end up in a situation where, you know, you didn't have that self-awareness mm. and look at the things, you know, about yourself, what you, what drives you, what motivates you. Um, and then you end up in a situation where both parties, you know, are kind You're of caught stretched. You're caught guard. Basically, yeah, 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 yeah. Literally. And, um, um, yeah, and when it comes to when it comes to a situation like that, it's it's mm -hmm. more difficult to deal with that situation than being pre-prepared before. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know you wanted to mention. Um, you did mention you had um, a number of points, and I want to go on to also speaking about um, having emotional resilience. Yeah. So yeah, that d leads me on to our next point, which is having greater um, emotional resilience. And emotional resilience um, is, is, is very important for us. Um, we are emotional creatures, mm -hmm. you know, human beings are emotional creatures. And especially um, as women, we have, you know, we have that um, intensified in us, if you like. Mm -hmm. so, um, so this is obviously, um, you know, it means that we need to be emotionally resistant to um, anything that will that will confront us in life and even relationships you know there can be a roller coaster with any relationship so um, developing an emotional um, resilience is so important for us because we have to remember you're going to become the pillar of support for others mm -hmm. you know the mother uh, becoming a mother is such a huge responsibility that child will look up to you for everything from the early years zero to five you know the mother will be the first port of call and that child will be looking at you even if you say nothing that child will imitate everything you do or say your emotions mm -hmm. you know the um, 
the enthusiasm you hold or if you don't have that enthusiasm the child will mimic all of these things and will pick up on uh, on your emotions um, so um, that's definitely an important point and uh, also just on that point I think like one thing for our sisters to think about um, is also finding you know there's resilience but also finding coping mechanisms that work yeah. for you because that is it's marriage isn't it marriage is a test like any mm. other test any other relationship you're always tested in every single yeah. relationship and as much as we seek to find we want to find comfort and um, you know like companionship in that relationship mm. we're also tested so yeah. finding coping mechanisms finding ways and communicating you know with the with the person that you're looking into you know what are your what are you? yeah, what, yeah how do you deal with difficult situations mm. what is your usual response finding out from you know family me their family members that's right yeah. and also honestly having that conversation with your family members because one thing that's true um, and my mum always used to say this is that your family know you best mm. um, and sometimes you think that yeah my you know alhamdulillah obviously maybe your friends know you in a different way maybe your mm. family members know you in a different way and asking people before you get married like what do you see in me um, how can I improve knowing those yeah. you know um, parts about you will help you also develop so mm. that when you're walking into a marriage you can take a you know you're, you're building yourself and of course even after marriage you build yourself yeah but that's something to also consider when it comes to you know building this resilience and um, dealing with your emotions yeah Emma. so I mean you you touched on a really important point which is that you know life we know that we're going to be tested in life and I think that's why it's so important um, to have that emotional resilience mm. because you know there are going to be many moments where we lose it where we get angry um, you know with our spouses um, with other family members with our children yeah. and this is when it really counts you know we're going to have to choose how we react yeah. and the more you work on your personal development and the more maturity you attain throughout doing that you will become resilient and of course that means you will create uh, that harmonious environment in your home mm -hmm. because you know everybody is sort of going out they're coming back to the home and you know the home is the responsibility of yeah. the wife the mother and so you will find that you know it will help you the most yeah. when you face those challenges um, yeah. and also understanding emotions mm -hmm. uh, because we have different women have different emotions from men mm -hmm. so if you can master those understanding those emotions you, you are better equipped, more prepared to deal with them. Yeah. Let's take children, for example. You know, children's emotions are all over the place and they're learning a lot of emotions and they're learning to control. So again, if we don't understand emotions from a very young age and we haven't mastered it by the time we choose to have, you know, to begin a family ourselves, then we can find ourselves in a real pickle. You know, we can find it really difficult not just to deal with others emotions but also our own because you know there'll be a lot of turmoil there'll be a lot to deal with a lot of challenges mm -hmm. um, and this journey can be sweeter if you actually become you know take that self-awareness and actually get to learn about others emotions yeah. and become emotionally intelligent yeah. Um, yeah. you know before those situations arise yeah. inshallah yeah. yeah and you know like mm. even um, with people who aren't Muslim this is something that's a big consideration and it's increasing in the workplace you mm. get trained on you know how to deal with emotions on Instagram everywhere you look it's about dealing with your emotions so when you think about Islam Islam already gave us um, you know the importance of when it comes to relationships mm. how we treat other people and also that you know what we're talking about being self-aware you know um, having that self-reflection mm. having you know very deep how to react based, well. yeah exactly yeah. And, and really deeply looking into our own um, you know as you were saying about anger and um, the emotions that we show all of which are natural we know mm. even the Sahaba they had comments on it so um, I, I always think of this uh, comment that's associated to mm. um, Ali radiallahu anhu and he said that um, anger is like an intoxicant mm. um, and it's so true because in the moment of anger you kind of don't know what you're doing you say stuff you don't mean or you mm. um, act in a way that you don't mean but it, it's about not denying that and not mm. uh, suppressing those emotions because they're natural but knowing how to now navigate through that and also mm. the aftermath dealing with the aftermath of saying something wrong and being really honest and apologizing you mm. know we, we so being aware can yeah. you see how it links back yeah. to self-awareness because 
if you become aware of what you're doing, what you're not doing, if you be, become aware of your emotions, when you're angry, when you're sad, yeah. you know, when you're happy, uh, then you can actually take control of how you react. And that's what um, growing up is all about. That's what maturity is all about. Yeah. Um, and our deen teaches us manners, you know, and we know um, from our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, um, you know, he said uh, that the re religion is manners. Yeah. And, you know, I, I used to often as a child think, what, what does that statement even mean? You know, um, how can so much importance be mm. given to manners? But our whole, you know, life, our, how we conduct ourselves with each other is all about manners yeah. and is all about, you know, Islam is, is about the deen because the deen um, aligns for us or the deen lays out what is halal, what is haram, yeah. what is acceptable, what is unacceptable. Um, and, you know, and this is how we, as you said, you know, we navigate ourselves yeah. through all these um, stages. Yeah, and every day, like, that, that's, mm. you know, what you said about manners and mm. how the deen is manners, um, you know, this the the fact that every single day we are you know we're social beings we live with families mm. we live with friends we live with people you know our employers or um even you know when we go to the groceries and we pick something up we're dealing with human beings, beings every single yeah. day isn't mm. it and that's where our manners and our the way that we deal with people comes into place and that's mm. where we consider like you mentioned the halal and haram it's not yeah. just when I'm picking the food is it halal or haram it's how I'm treating people how I'm communicating with people is this something that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having all those considerations mm. and especially when it comes to such an intimate relationship with your spouse to be um, and once once this person's your spouse you're going to have such a close relationship and mm. such a you know intense relationship as well because this person will see every you know side to you you'll have those arguments you'll have those um moments of vulnerability whatever it is you mm. you'll be sharing that space with them um and one thing that i you know have to think about is um th this whole thing about sharing space this is the person that you're mm. sharing you know your whole home with yes. um and you with you your perfections and imperfections exactly. everything exactly yeah. and, and mm. it can be very if you mm. if you aren't working on yourself um it can be really it's it's just going to be a harder journey to mm. go through than if you were working on yourself and i think that's the problem isn't it most people think you get married mm. and you've done the hardest yeah. part of the job but i think what we what most people don't realize is no the hard work comes afterwards yeah. getting married and actually you know doing the nikah and going through the ceremonies that's probably the most enjoyable and you know enjoyable part that you don't even have to um, doesn't even require much thinking really yeah. i think the hard work comes afterwards when you know when the honeymoon period is mm -hmm. over when real life sets in and you know the responsibilities come in expectations are there expectations are not met and um, you know and and as you say you know we're imperfect human beings and and you know as two people come together you start realizing each other's at some point you will become tired you know it mm -hmm. becomes monotone and you suddenly realize oh um you know the other person they have negative points as yeah. well or maybe it's mm -hmm. just that um you know marriage is a relationship where you're not going to be in love mm you know, 100% of the time, 24 yeah. hours a day, it, 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 it's not possible because, as I say, you you create that love, loving bond initially and that is what will keep you going in the future, inshallah, when you yeah. come across, um, you know, difficulties, when you have misunderstandings or you have disagreements and yeah. disagreements will happen, you know, um, because marriage is two imperfect people coming together working on being uh, becoming perfect and we're never going to attain perfection mm -hmm. but something I usually um, you know tell um, uh, my students and I normally tell um, people I work with is that we can't attain uh, perfection but excellence can be work you know attained we can work towards excellence and we can excel in mm -hmm. Um, you know in ourselves in what we do and that's something we should keep on working yeah. on as a Muslim yeah, um, you know as a Muslim yeah yeah it's an attitude mm. that we have where the Prophet he actually told us um, to be you know strive for excellence in everything mm. um, and that's the kind of attitude we have towards anything whether it's your work or your relationships mm. um, but also you know not to scare anyone like oh marriage is something that is just going to be so much hard work the point is that it is hard work and you can work on it it's um, 
It's like, if I were to simplify, it's like any relationship. Take a relationship with your best friend, for example, yeah. from childhood. You develop together, you grow up together, sometimes you have, you know, fall out. Um, you know, sometimes you make up and then you fall yeah. out, you know, over trivial things. Yeah. Um, and that's, I guess it's a relationship that still requires work. Any relationship, you know, with yeah. your siblings, with your parents. But marriage, so much more emphasis is put on because marriage is a companionship and you know it brings two people together and we know that um you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that it's marriage you know the, just the seriousness of it all because it brings two people together and it will that will be the core of the family and you will become responsible for bringing uh, you know a young family into the world Inshallah. and of course Inshallah. so that's Ustada, on that note yeah. um, I'd like to ask our viewers to join us after the break inshallah while we continue uh, this conversation on marriage and what we can work towards in ourselves inshallah <laughs> continuing the discussion of marriage with Ustada Saliha. Um, so Ustada Saliha, in the, just before the break, we were mm. talking about um, when it comes to our emotions, learning resilience and learning how to cope, you know, finding coping mechanisms, whether it's anger mm. or sadness, and we're talking about the nature of marriage is that you have this intensity in the relationship. Mm. And so before you go into it, you want to learn these things about yourselves and you want to find ways of um, becoming resilient but I also wanted to now mm. uh, move forward to uh, the point about um, having a longer lasting source of happiness mm -hmm. inshallah so if you could share some points on that okay so um, the longer lasting state of happiness see when we talk of happiness we have to define first what do we mean by happiness mm. so t to some people happiness will mean you know acquiring material goods um, you know just accumulating wealth and um, you know I don't know being able to sort of show that you're indulging in the world for others it might be a state of spirituality so you know finding um, contentment in their heart and as we know from the point of view of Islam um, you know the ultimate happiness is that that finding contentment in in, in everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for us so whether we receive happiness, you know, we are content with that. When we are undergoing trials, then we're content with that. And how are we tested? The way we're tested is that when we face happiness, what do we say? We, you know, we thank Allah. We have so much gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we want to pray our extra uh, nawafils and, you know, do extra sadaqah, etc. Um, you know, and we uh, make dua um, because Allah has, you know, accepted um, our call. But on the other hand, when, when we face a calamity, you know, often we do lose our way. Um, and that, again, takes us back to being emotional creatures. Yeah. We sometimes lose our way. But again, it's through this constant training and programming ourselves that we realize we can control our emotions. And so I'm not saying that, you know, we can't shed tears. I'm not saying that we can't feel angry. I'm not saying that we can't feel sad. Yeah. So these are all emotions. We're going to shout. We're going to scream. You know, we're going to feel mm. uh, like, you know, uh, we're breaking, falling apart. Um, and it's okay to feel all that. But what is it that we're controlling? What we're controlling is how we behave, how we react towards others. So, you know, with regards to concerning yourself, if you break down and you cry, you don't need to apologize for that. That's just emotions and it's not um, being inflicted on somebody else. But on the other hand, when we're screaming, shouting at somebody mm. else, you know, th on that instance, then that is when we, ha when, when we need to think about it. So contentment is important. Contentment with um, knowing that whatever Allah has, um, you know, um, ordained for us, um, like 
you know, whatever good or bad we are faced with, are we able to say Alhamdulillah? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, this is what will bring us contentment because ultimately we know that we've come to this dunya to, um, you know, to face trials and yeah. tests. Um, and inshallah, you know, finding that partner, um, you hope that they will become, you know, that pillar of support, that pillar of strength, that you can go through life together and be there for each other when you face these trials. Um, and, you know, we always pray that we don't become a trial for each other because that can happen also. So we don't know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, planned for each and every one of us. Our fates will be different. Um, and I think that's where acceptance comes in. That Do you accept that Allah will do as he pleases? And I, will you be able to say, Alhamdulillah, will you be able to say, I'm pleased with what Allah has uh, ordained for me? Um, so that is the real long-lasting happiness we're talking about that you do your best you do everything that is within your strength to make things right and if things still put, fall apart then just know that that was the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it wasn't your doing because sometimes we often blame ourselves and think you know I did everything to make this marriage yeah. work because we have to think about those marriages where um, they're just not meant to be yeah so it's not necessarily to place fault with you know the husband or the wife and I think this is where we often face a problem and I think this is what is putting off younger brothers and sisters uh, because you know we do have this um, conversation nowadays amongst young people that marriages are not lasting so why are we even thinking of um, getting married but I think we need to ask ourselves why are marriages not lasting and I think they're not lasting because we're no longer accommodating of each other's needs we're no longer um, you know, have patience with each other. Yeah. We just have that. We're so used to instant gratification. Yeah. We're so used to having instant results that we cannot um, bear, you know, having patience with each other, um, you know, with allowing things to develop, with allowing the other person to grow and, you know, allowing yourself to understand the other person as well. Yeah. So we, we do face a lot of challenges. But contentment, I think, ultimately, again, ties in with your understanding of the deen. So are you happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned for you in your life? Yeah, and also, mm. you know how you mentioned about how young people, um, or like, you know, mm. sisters and, and brothers in general, um, when it comes to marriage and they think, oh, you know, marriages aren't lasting. Um, and part of that is, um, you know, sometimes the mentality mm. that we take on from places that you know it's not from Islam it might be just from society in general where you go into a marriage not necessarily to work together on a relationship but yeah. rather um, you almost like seek a benefit for yourself mm -hmm. and so you went into a marriage with expectation of how it would serve you rather than how are we pleasing Allah subhanahu yeah. Allah, together and so when those expectations aren't fulfilled and marriage doesn't serve you or um, and, and you can't find the benefit in it. Um, it can be, you know, you don't want to use the word selfish, but no. that mentality of like self-benefit and myself and just looking out for myself kind of thing, mm -hmm. all of these play a part into what we expect in a marriage. Um, and then once you're in there, you know, you have mm -hmm. those difficulties where both parties were just looking out for themselves and not each other. Um, yeah. And there's not that communal, you know, that, that coming together and relationship and building mm -hmm. one another. Like you mentioned, this growth that you want to have for both of you know, each other and together as well. It's partnership, isn't yeah. it? And, you know, um, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that among his signs are that he has created you, you know, that he has created from amongst you women, um, so uh, let, let's just look at the ayah. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So what does that mean? It means that we've made wives for you from amongst yourselves so that you can find tranquility with them. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not just talking about the wives. It's, you know, the husband and wife between um, the spouses. Okay. It's a place of tranquility. It's a place of contentment. So the idea is that you know, the home is um, such a blessed place and, you know, you need to work on creating this uh, peaceful environment from each other. So it doesn't matter where you go outside in the world, you know, whether you're going to study, to work, you can face all the tests and trials of the uh, dunya and come home and find, you know, that peace and that comfort and, comfort and mm. that friend in your husband or wife. And this is what the companion should should be like. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes we tend to shape these relations or these roles with 
duties and yeah. jobs and you know we we tend to assign it to either cooking and cleaning mm -hmm. for example and um, you know I don't know the one the husband making a living and earning mm -hmm. a li livelihood bringing home shopping um, you know we try to s stereotype the roles too much and I think we overcomplicate things yeah. because if we simply saw marriage as a partnership take the example of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know, and I often like to use the example of his marriage with Khadija radiallaha simply because it lasted many years. You know, we have 25 years, um, you know, of blessed marriage, and we know that they faced many tests and trials, and they also had children. Um, and so I like to use the example here because we know how Khadija radiallaha she supported the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She trusted him when nobody else trusted in him. Um, you know. Can you imagine a man today saying to his wife, he's packing his bags, he's going because, you know, he's seeking um, uh, guidance from Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think, you know, we, we, we would do our nuts and think, what, <laughs> what, you know, has he lost it? But subhanAllah, you have to think about the level of trust they had, the level of, you know, friendship and mm -hmm. companionship they had um, to even think, you know what, she must have thought that I don't know what he's doing, but I have so much, she had so much faith in him. Yeah you know, as a person um, and as a husband and as a father, that she just supported him blindly. Yeah. And this is the kind of relationship that we should aspire to have, you know, that we should build our trust and our love and our friendship to such a level mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we don't need to question it. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that um, marriage has. And I think... Um, you know, and that's why we're talking about longer lasting happiness. Um, you know, when we think about it, it's not just contentment, something else we tend to overlook about marriage, and this is really serious point, you know, um, when you're looking for a spouse, okay. is that marriage isn't just for the dunya. There are numerous places in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you and your spouses will enter Jannah. Yeah. So we need to remember, it's not just the dunya, it's not going to be that death will do us part. Yeah. It will be till Jannah reunites us, yeah. inshallah. And so I think this is the outlook we need to have, um, you know, as Muslims, as Muslims, and our youth today need to understand that marriage is not just for this world. It will be until the akhirah. You will be reunited. So you know, we need to invest in our akhirah. Yeah. Um, and I think I think that view of mm. you know taking um, you know the wider view into account, the reality into account that we will mm. pass away. Um, it really puts everything you know the marriage into context. So when yeah. you you know as you mentioned. Um, and as we were speaking about when you face trials in your marriage, mm -hmm. um, when you face trials together, you and your partner face trials. And I think um, last week you mentioned people might not have, be able to have children or if they have children, mm -hmm. um, they could have children that they have, you know, are harder to look after. Yeah. Or even, you know, just Or the raising. children have many issues. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm. And so whatever those issues are, and um, whether you're facing, you know, these trials together or individually, you're in it together. And mm. when you have that context that we're working uh, in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get to the akhirah, it makes all of those tests fall into place. Because yeah. it's not about in that moment how angry you are and who no. did what wrong. It's about... You forgiving and moving forward with with what you have so that you can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, that's right. So you're yeah. constantly forgiving each other, constantly, um, you know, uh, supporting each other, but you're also a reminder to each other of your deen. So when one person, um, you know, um, sort of loses path, then it's up to the other, um, uh, you know, spouse to bring them back on. And it's just like a friendship, isn't yeah. it? If you think about it as friends, you know, when we grow up, as children, you know, some of our friends want to do naughty things and we say, hey, <laughs> did you know it's haram, you know? Yeah. So it's similarly, as we grow up, nothing changes. We, we, it's, we have deeper, meaningful relationships, um, you know, and hence we say we look for meaningful re relationships and actually that leads us onto our last yeah. point, deep, fulfilling relationships. Um, you know, this is the basis of a long lasting relationship, isn't it really? Because, um, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to then determine what you're going to be looking for in a spouse. Yeah. And when two people come together and their basis is the Quran and Sunnah, then they already have a reference point. They already have something that they both unite on. Now they have the same goals and it will be so much easier to um, you know, navigate towards those goals. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so um, in terms of like practically when mm. it comes to um, creating that deep relationship or um, viewing Islam as a reference point, mm. what does that mean um, in the trials and um, tests? Like how does that person build themselves in order to work for a deeper relationship because you know what we're talking about mm -hmm. is even before walk I walking into a marriage yeah. these are things that you want to work on in yourself um, so when it comes to understanding that you want to have a deep meaningful relationship with mm -hmm. the person that you're looking into um, and uh, with the spouse that you want to have in your life mm -hmm. um, what does that mean for a, a person to you know search in somebody or creating themselves, um, how do they build that deeper relationship with others? I think deeper relationship comes from, um, so like I said earlier, that when you understand who you are, okay. self-awareness comes from understanding or recognizing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So as a Muslim or Muslima, first and foremost, we need to understand what our purpose is in life um, but also to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know your relationship with Allah, then you can look at all other relationships. Yeah. Because, you know, as we know um, from Islam by necessity, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you any mistakes that you make. You know, it's up to Him to forgive you for those. Um, anything that, you know, is just between, um, you know, your Rob and you. But any. Um, injustice done towards other human beings mm -hmm. you know as we know for example backbiting and slandering those are not acts which will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless the person who um, you know you um, you spoke about yeah. forgives you themselves so just from that we can understand how important it is you know to um, not be unjust to other people mm -hmm. so really it's all about um, giving importance to other human beings knowing that everybody has a heart mm -hmm. and you know so we fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we know that Allah has a heart on us um, mm -hmm. and you know we fulfill um, all the ibadah that we are expected to perform uh, similarly people have haq upon us and I think when we look at marriage in a similar way I'm not sure if I'm answering your question yeah, so yeah. just remind me but when we look at marriage in a similar way yeah. um, you mustn't come in uh, you know selfishly thinking what does he have to offer me yeah. or or vice versa you know the husband mustn't come the prospective husband mustn't come in thinking what does she have to offer me yeah. in fact that's why I said self-awareness is important because you look at what do I have to offer so you place what I what you have to offer on the table yeah. and if what the other person places on the table matches you will already find that there will be some attraction there yeah. because you know your goals um, you know your uh, characteristics etc etc your values yeah. you know will match yeah. and that is what will form the attraction and you will find you want to you know speak to each other you want to be in each other's company yeah. so you might not um, another difficulty young people face is they'll yeah. they'll say well you know, we got along, in fact, we talked okay, but I didn't feel any attraction. And that's okay, you know, give it some time. Go meet again and now talk about deeper, meaningful things because yep. you've done the formality now. Yeah. And give yourself time. And, um, you know, and that's why we know that our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you're considering someone for marriage, you know, I know I've heard stories of where people haven't even seen the pictures, they haven't even spoken. Yeah. But we know from Islam that you are supposed to go and see the person, you know, speak to them um, and then make your decision. Yeah. And also make lots and lots of dua. Yeah. Um, never forget that either. Inshallah. Inshallah. I think that's a good uh, place mm. to end this um, session uh, for today. Inshallah. Um, Jazakallah khair to our audience for joining us. Inshallah, if you join us next week, we will also be continuing on the topic of marriage, but we will look from a different angle and about what can we do and what are the means to um, proceed in, the, in looking for marriage, Inshallah. We'll see you next week. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.